There we go. And I was using the wrong mic. I'm a good streamer, guys, I swear. Jeez. I know, I had the wrong mic selected. I was, I was using this mic, and it's a dynamic mic, and it's three feet away from me. So. Been loving my Beacon uh, mic and Mix Create. Definitely want to work with them one day. They're they're a cool team. I like the guys at Beacon a lot. FX3 or A7S3. Well, you can see today we're working with both. So I'll let you know in a minute when we jump into it. He's not fixed his thumbnail? Thumbnail's perfect. I don't know what you're talking about. What's up, Caitlin? Had a baby and all, oh my gosh. Boy or girl, congratulations. She got monetized? Congratulations, today's a fun day. Dude, it's been like a week since I've gone live. I've just been crazy busy. I'm going out of town again on Friday, heading to LA for a vid summit. You, any, any of you guys going to vid summit? <clears throat> it's a sweet mouse thing. I mean, it's just a G502, but it was custom colored by Colorware. I'll be at vid summit. Oh, sick. You're not in LA? No, I'm in Utah. My wife and I have lived in Utah for five years, six years. You think we can build a Senpai HQ like this in LA? I don't think so, man. I don't think so. Typo in the Spotify song, fleeting, fleeting thoughts. Does it say leading thoughts and it's supposed to be fleeting thoughts? <laughs> Derek, which album? You'd go broke building it in Cali? Not even joking. You got five monitor plus three PC and Xbox, what I use to live stream and record video, plus all screens are filled with Macs. That sounds like my nightmare. I'm actually getting rid of one of my screens. What's up, Fanjecture? It's, I never use it. I put it over there for my Mac, but my Mac also goes to this screen. I don't ever look at that one. It's just another thing taking up space. I'm gonna get rid of it. Do you thank you for the 18 months? Sandy also, thank you for the 18 months. That was 22 minutes ago. A lot of 18 monthers coming around. So how many of you guys have a, how many of you guys have a, uh, have a vlog setup, or just in general, what's your camera setup? For those of you with with cameras, with some kind of DSLR or mirrorless camera, what's your camera setup? It's been so long since I've cleaned these. There's just, in all the little crevices, there's so much dust, I can't even get in there. They don't really think that through. They really shouldn't put knobs so close together so you can't clean them with a Q-tip. Every Every button, every knob should have enough distance around it so it can be cleaned with a Q-tip. That would be, like if I designed cameras, that would be one of my rules. Every crevice needs to be cleanable with a Q-tip so you don't walk around with a dusty camera all the time. You gotta, that's the only way I know how to clean it.
Sony A5100, that's a great streaming camera, especially if you can find them like used on Craigslist or Facebook Marketplace. Scott, what's up, man? How's the edit coming? Did you upgrade to the 14 Pro? I may have. I'm gonna be honest. It's all right. It's underwhelming. Like you guys are watching my texts. <laughs> I think it could have been a lot better. I feel like the dynamic island is not properly utilized. And the fact that it is kind of like the main, the main like aesthetic, like exciting update and it's really poorly, poorly utilized is kind of a bummer. The showcase seemed underwhelming. Yeah. It's all right. It's, it's good. The updates are fun. I like the always on screen. I like the dynamic island. I think it has a ton of potential. The new camera's pretty bonkers. Not upgrading from the 13 Pro Max? Yeah, you shouldn't. Like, I hate that we've got this dynamic island, but texts still come down the same way they always have. Put texts in the island. Why aren't the texts in the island? You know? There's still so many things that happen on the screen that aren't in the island that should be, that should be the new place where like to get rid of everything, all the intrusive things on the screen, they should all be a part of the island now. What's a good price to pay for an A5100? I mean, problem is prices during COVID prices skyrocketed. You used to be able to buy a brand new one for a, for 45 or 450. 450 on Amazon. I remember when I first started talking about it. Ugh, excuse me. You can get it for 450 on Amazon. Um, and then and then they discontinued them. You couldn't find them anywhere. I mean, they've been discontinued for a while, but you could still find them online. Now even used ones are more than that. I mean, if it were me, like especially with I see with the prices going down, I would still look for it under under 400, maybe under 350. I have the same phone where can I get your wallpaper? I want to adjust it a little bit because you notice, you notice, I don't know if you can tell, the, <laughs> all the letters at the top are still white and I put a white background under them. I don't know why they did that. So I think I'm going to add like a little bit of a shadow up there. I'm going to adjust this a little bit and then maybe I'll throw it in the discord or something. I got my 5100 for 250 on eBay. Yeah, see, there you go. That's what you want to look for. You want to look for those sub 400, sub 300 ones. For varying responses to this. But would you say the upgraded lens is a must have in order to use an A6000? Not a must have, but it would be a massive update. The lens is more important than the camera. Does the cam you have have an automatic 30 minute shut off? No. No, Sony's haven't had an auto automatic 30 minute shutdown in forever. Canon's had them for a long time. Canon, even when they got rid of the extra tax, it was like a British tax or something where uh, cinema cameras were taxed higher than photo cameras. So they, they had them capped at 30 minutes so that they would still sell them as photo cameras even though they could film. Um, but then even after they removed that, they continued to shut them off at 30 minutes because they didn't want them to eat into the, uh, their cinema line. Cause they have like the C100, C200, C500, they have a whole cinema line and they knew that if they allowed people to, to, uh, film longer than 30 minutes at a time, people wouldn't buy their cinema cameras, which is such a Canon thing to do. Canon's kind of become the a-hole of cameras. Sometimes, with some things. They've also done some really cool things. Uh, 
Better late than never? Yeah, they have now, they have now stopped doing that. Now all their new R cameras and stuff, I'm pretty sure, I don't know how many of them, but I know a lot of them don't have that 30 minute limit anymore. How'd you get that Apple Watch face? This is just the stripes Apple Watch face. You can turn, you can choose the number of stripes. So I changed it, changed it to two. You can change the angle. So I changed it to 45 degrees and you can choose the colors of whatever you want. So I made it match my, uh, my straps. I think it's sick. This is like, like I just custom made this. Yeah, yeah, that's a jump of your majesty behind me. Let's jump into this cameras. So this has been like my main camera like if I were ever to vlog I bring this and it used to go on this thing right this used to be my vlog setup why is it backwards hold on a sec that's why okay so go on here on a switch pod you ever tried Fujifilm I have never owned a Fujifilm camera So this, oh, and then this microphone. This has been my vlogging slash handheld setup for a long time. Sony a7S III, they're super popular, they're super common, right? The problem is all my footage was really shaky because this is a heavy setup. This is a super heavy lens. The arm is super long. And so if I was walking around, it didn't matter how good my footage looked, it would look shaky and that drove me nuts. By the way, Mats, Matsu. Thank you for the 18 months. Did you upgrade? Oh, I read that one, yeah. Manifestation, welcome to the Thrifty Boys. Blake Powelson, thank you for the 11 months. Astro, thank you for the 17 months. Thank you, guys. But yeah, whenever I shot like this, all my footage was shaky. So, here's what I did. I changed this out with this. Look how much shorter that is. It's basically like holding on to this, but it's also a ton lighter. And it's like a thicker, like a the handle is much thicker, so you get a much better grip on it. And so it's much easier to hold straight. I really, really like this. This is called this is called the Mantis Pod. I also also swapped out these lenses. So this one weighs about 900 grams. This one weighs 350 grams. And it's this, look at that little thing. Look at, look at the difference here, hold on. It's a big lens for a selfie, not for selfies, it's for vlogging, you crazy. Look at the difference here. <laughs> Look at that glass. Now don't get me wrong, this is a better lens in every way. So this is the 12 to 24, it's super wide. It's way wider than this one. This is the 16 to 35. And don't get me wrong, it bums me out. I'm gonna be real with you guys. It bums me out. I miss getting this wide. I also, this is only an F4, this is an F2.8. I miss the F2.8. I miss the 12 millimeter, especially if you throw on something like active steady shot on this that like keeps the shake, which is what I want to do. If it gets rid of the shake, it punches in. So it turns this 16 mil almost into an 18 mil. Whereas this one, the 12 mil is really only a tiny bit higher than the 13 mil. So I'm going in that, I'm, I'm debating that a lot right now. Like, I've got shaky footage and there are two ways of shaky footage with this thing and there are two ways to fix it. I can either sacrifice a little bit of width and a little bit of quality and go with this little 16 to 35, which is a great lens by the way, we'll look at it. Or, or I just work out a little bit <laughs> and then I can have all the things Then I can have everything. Then I can hold it steady, it won't be shaky, and I get the f2.8, and I get the 12 mil. I have a really hard time justifying not just working out my shoulders a little bit harder, you know? Attaboy August 1st, his name is Maddox. 
Missed your streams, so I had to, I had so much going on at the end of my pregnancy. Oh, I believe it. I believe it. Do some push-ups. I mean, I go to the. I, I work out twice a day. We'll get there. That's. I think. Um, I'm gonna shoot some videos here, and I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna. I'm gonna use both of them, and I'm gonna really decide like how much, how big are the advantages of this one versus the simplicity of this guy. Here's another thing. I haven't used this camera. This used to be our main camera. Like this was what we shot all of our videos on. It's beautiful. The uh, the FX3. I love this thing. Such a sick camera. And it's got this big old arm that you can remove. I obviously just took it off recently. It, it hasn't been used much. I wanna say uh, in the last year, I wanna say we've used it on maybe one or two videos. If I couldn't use a DSLR for vlogging, what camera would you use? I'd use my phone. Not, it's not even a question. Wait, I'm basically stuck with Canon now because all my lenses are EF mounts. Not that I'm mad about it, does it limit my options? It doesn't limit your options. You can still do whatever you want, but it's gonna be an inconvenience. It's gonna be a huge cost. Or are you saying, does using Canon limit your options? Canon's got some great stuff now. They were super limited three, four years ago. Um, they're building out their, they're building out their experience, uh, their ecosystem, like they should have been three, four years ago. Didn't you have a cinema camera? Yeah, that was this one. Oh, so we have the Blackmagic. Um, Blackmagic was not super... We have the Blackmagic 6K. We use that as our top-down shot now. Uh, it's mounted up into the ceiling, and it's really convenient because you can record over USB Type-C. And so we run a USB cable all the way out into the wall, and it's this little... This little uh, SSD that we mount over there. And so I can start it recording from the Blackmagic app on my phone, and it can record to the SSD. So I don't ever have to like stand up, on, like if I were to use one of these up there, I would realistically like, I'd have to go up there and turn it on, turn it off. You can also just power it directly with a standard power, power supply. And if you don't have a battery in there and you just like flip the switch, it turns it off. <laughs> Caitlin, welcome to the True Senpai, thank you. <laughs> Um, so that's our top down camera. We use the Sony A1 for our main shooting and it shoots in 8K. That's how we're able to do like the, the zoom ins and stuff in the video and still maintain a 4K export. Um, and we don't, we don't lose resolution doing it. But this camera is amazing. And it, I realized it does, well one, it's 50 grams lighter than this one. It just has a couple advantages. Okay, look at this, okay. I'm gonna unplug this because it's not on right now. This is a bad thing to do. I don't want to, I don't like exposing the sensors. I'm just gonna do this for like a fraction of a second, okay? Take a look at the body. I'm gonna line them up, all right? These are the two different bodies. This is the A7S III, this is the FX3. I've just found a couple advantages of the FX3. So it's 50 grams lighter, which is great. Just in general, I, like, I wanna shave off as much weight as I can. Two, this bump up here, this bump up here is entirely for a viewfinder, right? This viewfinder here, which I've literally, I've had this camera for like three years now, I've never once used this, not a single time. And all it does is it means that my, my, my microphone is mounted so high. Look at this. Why don't they make these lower profile? Like, why do they have to build it up vertically like this here? Why do they have to build it up vertically? Why can't it be flat? Why can't it go out and down and kind of hang out over here? Why do they have to make these so tall? But this one, this guy over here, since the top is totally flat, look at that. It's not a massive difference, but it's enough to make a difference. That's much more manageable to me. I like that a lot. It's also like, it's just a little thing like the, 
the social anxiety of people being like, oh, is he a vlogger? I feel like when you see these, you expect them to be a vlogger. When you see a camera that feels and looks this robust, maybe it's a personal thing. Maybe it's just a mental thing in my head that's gonna help me, but doesn't actually have any real world, uh, real world change to it. But like, I feel like when you see a camera like this, you have slightly different expectations out of it. It feels like a more cinematic experience. I also like that it doesn't have the dumb little like, what's up with these, like, you can't take these off. <laughs> these things here. I'm being so picky. These are all so minor, but they're important to me. What should my budget be for a streaming camera? Um, if you, I mean, it depends on what you want to do. If you want to just get like a good webcam, you can get one for 200 bucks. If you want to go like near this quality, you should probably get a used Sony on uh, on like Facebook Marketplace or eBay or something for 300, maybe expect $300. And then probably another $300 for the lens. So 600 plus, I mean, hopefully, maybe you already have a capture card. I don't know, you probably need a cam link. Which you can get for about 100 bucks now. Did we just get a raid? Patrick Sterling, what's up guys? Uh, yeah, hey, if you guys didn't know, you can now turn on, you can flip a switch that is accept raids or accept live redirects from everybody. So you can, you don't have to approve people. You can finally just let anyone raid you. I changed that when they added that a couple days ago. So Patrick, thank you for the raid. What's up? Hey, looks like it worked to me. Welcome everybody. We're, uh, I just updated the firmware on this thing. So another cool thing about this camera is it actually just got approved by Netflix. Technically, I can shoot a Netflix original on here. That's pretty neat. It's Blackmagic 6K overkill for vlogs being filmed by a cameraman. The, another main problem we had with the Blackmagic, one, it only shoots in ProRes, so your files are gigantic. Well, it shoots in either ProRes or RAW. Two, I don't know if the Pro has changed this, but I know the original one didn't do continuous autofocus, and that was a problem. Um, with our stuff, with our last videos, when I used the Black Magic at our last place, I couldn't move much because it didn't keep focus, whereas like all these Sonys and Canons and stuff, they maintain a continuous autofocus. So, yeah, that was always kind of an issue, is, is uh, getting the autofocus correct. Where'd you get those dope sound panels? Oh, online, there's acoustic panels. They're Corning, Corning, like 503 or something, or oh, they're like legitimate acoustic panels. And then I actually had to order the acoustic, the acoustic uh, material that goes around it and actually had to glue it, spray glue it to it myself. So they're all very like custom made. I didn't just buy them like that. Um, but there's one specific thing. So let's turn this thing on. There's one specific thing that this one does that this one doesn't do. These, for the most part, are like feature parity cameras. They're the exact same internals, same sensor, same, uh, they can both record up to 4K 120. 4K 120 is the same 1.1, I think, X crop factor. Like, they're almost exactly the same camera, right? But there's occasionally a feature that one will have that the other won't have. And so let me just share with you what I'm talking about here. Let me see if I can zoom this in, hold on. That doesn't look like we're in focus. Why aren't we in focus? What's that? All right, this, we're gonna stand on a swivel chair. Wish me luck. Whoa. Ah. I don't see anything changing. Focus. <laughs> what is happening? 
I'm like rotating the ring and it's not fo it's not changing the focus. All right, it's just gonna be what it is. So Sony camera, the best one for streaming. The reason I think Sony cameras are the best for streaming is not because they're like physically the best cameras. I like them a lot, I use Sony's. Um, Canon's got a lot of amazing cameras too. The thing about Sony's, the trick about Sony's is the limitations, Sony removed the limitations a long time ago. So the, like the 30 minute, like if you get a, a Sony and a Canon from six years ago, the Sony's gonna be able to stream indefinitely, right? This camera's not gonna turn off unless it overheats, which it rarely does. It does sometimes do, but it rarely overheats. The Canon's gonna shut off after 30 minutes. What that means is I can go on eBay or I can go on Facebook Marketplace or whatever and I can buy an old used Sony for $200 to $300 and it's gonna work really great for streaming. If I wanna get a Canon that works great for streaming, I need to get one that's maybe a year old max and probably more expensive. I can literally get, I bought this camera that's up here that's not on because it would be revealing a, a device that I'm using that hasn't been released yet. <laughs> so I can't turn it on. Um, that camera is a thir uh, 11 year old camera, about an 11 year old camera and it's full frame 4K runs indefinitely. Can't get that with Canon. And I got it for 500 bucks. Okay, so here's the deal. So with these cameras, right? If you can't read it, I'm just gonna read it for you. So memory one, memory two, memory three. So these are my three main settings that I'm gonna be using while I'm out shooting videos. Padre, have a good one, man. So what I wanna do is I wanna set these to the three things that I'm gonna use the most. Memory one, I'm gonna set to be my main vlogging one. One where I can go around and I can shoot and I don't have to worry about anything. If I'm walking from a bright area to a dark area, whatever, it's gonna be fully automatic, right? Everything completely auto. Auto white balance, auto exposure, auto aperture, auto ISO, auto shutter speed. Everything's auto. Trust the camera to get the shot, right? That's what memory one's gonna be. Memory two is also gonna be 4K 30. These are both one and two, they're both gonna be 4K 30. Standard, regular talking 4K 30 shots. But memory two is gonna be totally manual. That way if I throw this thing on a desk or in a controlled environment, uh, I'm not moving around. I want this to be able to, I wanna be able to set it exactly. I can change the autofocus. I can set the aperture to be F 2.8 or whatever the lowest is so I get the most background blur. So. These are both, one and two are both gonna be 4K 30. And then number two is gonna be manual. Number one is gonna be totally automatic. Number three. Now this is where I, I kinda wish they gave you four. <laughs> because I wanna have one for 4K 60 and I wanna have one for 4K 120. And they don't let you do that. So, what I have to do is I have to make memory three 4K 60. And then if I wanna change, like on this one, let me show you. If I wanna change from 4K 30 to 4K 60, so I think that's what I have. So on three, yeah, it's 4K 60 right now. I don't know if you can see it because for some reason I can't focus that camera. But with number three, it says 4K 60 right there. And if I wanna change it to shoot something in 4K 120, I have to go into the menu I have to, okay, I'm in the wrong spot. I have to go into the top, uh, the shooting menu. Then I have to go to image quality. Then I have to go to movie settings. Then I have to change it to 120. And then I also have to change it to 10 bit because for some reason when you change the, the frame rate, sometimes it resets the record settings back to 8 bit. Now I can shoot 4K 120. This one has something that the other one doesn't have. So if I go into the settings, it's over here. I go to the bottom one, I go to setup. So on both of them, you can do operation customize where you can choose, that's what this is. The orange line says operation customize. And I can go into custom key dial setting and I'm gonna make it this four down here. There we go. Which is this one right here. And I can actually set it to be recording frame rate which I set earlier today. So now when I'm shooting, it's all dark. It's, it's not actually black. I'm just facing it straight down. If I hit this button, 
I now have a menu. This is 60 frames, 30 frames, 24, 120. I can change it to whatever frame rate I want. Realistically, I could actually just do take one or like setting one or two that's normally 4K 30. One's automatic, one is manual. And I can change, like if I want totally automatic 120, I change the, the uh, memory one to 120. I can make any of these 120, depending on what the settings are. For some reason, this one, it doesn't let you do that. It only lets you do it in S and Q, which is like uh, slow and quick mode, which is meant to shoot like slow-mo stuff and, and, uh, and whatever you call them time lapses and stuff. But the problem with slow S and Q mode is it doesn't record audio. So like if I wanted to like shoot something in crazy super slow-mo and then whoosh, turn it around and start vlogging and have it all be a continuous shot, I can't do that because if I did it in S and Q, it wouldn't record any of the audio. So now, because this one can do it, I can record I can set one, two, and three to be 4K 30 auto, 4K 30 manual, 4K 60 manual, and then whichever one I want to change to, I can make it, I can make it 120. Or if for some reason I really want 4K 60 auto, I can just go to my memory recall one, which is my fully auto, and I can just change it from 30 to 60. It's really nice. I'm really excited about the idea of using this as my vlog camera. Let's see what it looks like. Let's take a look real quick. I want you to see, I want you guys to see what the different lenses are like. I want to see what your thoughts are on this because I'm still torn. Okay. Let's throw on the super light tiny lens first. Let's go back to uh, this one here. Throw this on it. I really like this little thing. This is called the Mantis Pod, by the way. This little guy. It's a really great little tripod. Plus, it's got this little thing here on the front one that goes like this. And so you can like hang it on something. If you're like by a fence, you can like hang it on the fence. It's just a really versatile, really compact, but really sturdy tripod and so it's made it a lot it's made my footage a lot uh, a lot less shaky All right, let's get this going You gonna give me a signal? You were working earlier. You don't feel like working now? There we go. Okay, hold on, let's <laughs> let's brighten it up first. All right, shutter speed is. Let's set up. Let's set up uh, setting number one. So we're gonna make this one. We're gonna make it 4K. Why don't we do this on screen? Hold on a second. You should be able to see this. There we go. Okay. So now you can see all the settings. So we're gonna make this first one. We're gonna make it 4K. We're gonna make it 4K 30. Gonna make it 10 bit 422 so you get all the color color information in there. Shooting mode, exposure mode. For some reason we're in flexible exposure mode. What even is that? How do I turn it off? What is happening? <laughs> Hold on. Does it fix it if I do it not in here? Oh, I'm in memory recall mode. Okay, that's why. All right, my bad. We gotta change this to just regular. 
program auto. Got to change back everything that I changed. File format, 4K, movie settings, 30p, 10-bit 422. Everything's auto. How's the shot look? The ISO doesn't look like it's auto. If I click this, if I hold it. The ISO is not being auto. And it doesn't let me change it to auto. What am I doing wrong here? Did you get scammed by Slicker? I'm a little hurt that he didn't even reach out to me. If I'm being real. ISO. There we go. All right. So it's a power zoom lens. I mean, you can see that if I turn it, it takes a second. Like it's all done with motors in there, right? And there's a little switch on the side. If I want to, I can just turn this little switch and it zooms in and out. It's still pretty wide. Do we have, I don't know if we have, um, we might not have a steady shot turned on. I'm gonna show you what I do with my steady shot real quick. Let's change that setting. This is what I like to do with Sony's and steady shot. So operation, custom key setting. It's up here. It's this button number four, which you can see is right here. It's a multi-way switch, so you can click it in and you can go up, down, left, right. It's basically like a little flat joystick. And I like setting that one. It looks like it's number four right there. There we go. I like setting that to my image stabilization. because not only can I click it in, so I click it in to pull up the, the menu, but then I also get to use it like with the same button, all with the same button. I can click it in to bring up the menu, go up and down to change it, and then click it in again to select it, all with the same button. So I really like doing that. Is this a gimbal? No, it's just a little tripod. So now with steady shot on, it's so smooth. So smooth. But you can see with that steady shot on, we lose, like this is this is the 16 mil, this is normally 16 mil. This is with steady shot on. You can see what we lose there. So we already have a lens that's not as wide. What's up, Mitch? You should use the heavier lens and just work out more. That's what we're talking about, shut up. <laughs> I went through this whole thing with Mitch, was it yesterday? Two days ago. Like it's still fine, like it's still a good vlogging shot. But let me just show you the difference between this. So this is the 16 to 35. Right? You can see right here, are we in steady shot mode? Yeah. If I were to swap this out here real quick. And you're like, ah, oh, this isn't any bright, this isn't any wider. Look at how much wider this shot is. Look at this shot. Mitch, I gotta make you a, uh, I'm gonna make you a mod. There we go. So look how cool and wide this shot is. I'm holding this at the exact same distance as I was in the last one. And this is with, this is with active steady shot turned on. If I turn it off, that is a bonkers shot. Look how cool this shot is. It's fisheye, it's not fisheye at all. You can see, fisheye means that the lens, the edges, the straight lines start to curve. 
It's still rectilinear. Look at the edge of the wall here. It is still perfectly straight all the way up and down. Even in the far corners. Yeah, you get a little bit of stretching, you get a little bit of distortion, but it manages to maintain a rectilinear shot the whole time. This shot is so cool. Like, look, I'm, I'm literally six inches from this monitor and I, or from this lens, and I still get my entire, I mean, I would never want to shoot this shot, right? Cause it looks terrible, but like I could, like I'm, I'm, my nose is almost touching it and I still have my entire face. <laughs> Rectal. Oh my gosh. 16 mil lens. This is a 12 mil. This is 12 millimeter, but that means that if I go to active steady shot, I get a 1.1 X crop. That means this is now a 13.2 mil, but I have, st it's still 13.2 and I have active steady shot on. Such a cool shot. We see all your pores. Look at all my pores. Yeah, it's gross. As a creator, you always see the flaws in your work. I know, but I love this lens. Okay, again, so okay, keep your eye on this one. Let's have let's have the active steady shot turned on because realistically, if I'm walking around, I'm going to be using active steady shot. So we have this shot and it's pretty heavy. This room gets warm because my PC, but like, I'm starting to sweat. <laughs> Versus this shot. And you can see the difference. It's still a beautiful lens. Like it's still a great shot, but it's not as wide. It doesn't have that, that punchy, crazy look to it. You know, that I, I really loved. 16 is more practical. I mean, of course it is. Look how tiny this is. It's, it's almost like a, it's just above a third of the weight of this thing. But like for vlogging, where rarely do I need to go in any higher than, than 24 mil, having a 12 to 24 gives me so much of it. Like I could zoom the 12 to 24 into 16. I could still get this exact shot on this lens, but it would actually work better in low light because it goes to F2.4 or F2.8 and I would get more of a background blur, again, because of the same aperture. But this is as far as this thing goes. I can't get any wider than this with steady shot on. If I were to set it down, I could turn steady shot off. Which camera is it? This is the FX3. But this is the cool thing now. So I can do this and like, oh, I want automatic. Oops. I want automatic, but I want it in 120 frames. All right, now I'm shooting in 4K 120 frames. Just with a little button and you can't for some reason, you can't do that on the, on the uh, A7S III. I don't know why they don't allow you to do that. Whoa. Is there a difference between 24 and 30P? Yeah. 6P. All right. Sorry, that was an obnoxious, an obnoxious answer. Um, yeah, 24 has more of a cinematic look to it. It's got, uh, it's, it's not as smooth, but it looks like a film. That's really the difference. It, you can't really see it unless you know what you're looking for. It's more of a, it's more of a feel. All right, but we need to, now that we've got this one, I believe, let me double check. Let's take a look in here. Oh, we want to change this to picture profile eight. Wait, where's picture profile eight? Can we not? Uh oh. <laughs> oh, they moved them. They moved them. They moved all the cinetones. The screen might turn off here in a sec. Yeah, I'm going to unplug it. How did they do that? What did they make? They moved picture profile eight with the latest update. They moved it to something else. 
And I don't remember where they moved it to. <sighs> I gotta find it. They shouldn't have done that. Picture profile, nope, that's not what I'm looking for. Does anyone remember with the new with the new update how to how to change this to uh, to S log three? I don't remember how to do it. That used to just be they'd have all the S logs just right in there. Ah, I gotta look into that. Okay, I'll figure it out later. In the meantime, I want to say it's in here. Shooting mode. Camera set memory, we're gonna set this. You can see at the very top up there, one, two, one, two. Change it to one. So now, if we move this to setting number one, it does everything totally auto, 4K 30. Are we in 30? Shoot, we're in 20, or 120. Let's <laughs> save it again. All right, now we have a fully auto setting that I can change whatever I want there. All right, now let's make one. Let's make the next one. Next one's gonna be manual. Fully manual. Everything's exactly the same, but it's fully manual. And by default, I want this down to 60. And I want the ISO. What is the, who knows, is the, Base ISO on this camera. Hold on. What's the base ISO? I can't remember if it's 6, 640 or if it's 800. I always thought it was 640. Why is my camera not on? There we go. Base ISO Sony FX FX3. Oh, it's 800. 812. All right, good to know. I thought it was 640. So we'll change the ISO. By default, we'll have it at 800. And cool. And then we can actually change the aperture with this little ring around the lens, which is nice. Set memory to two. Now, last one, change it to 60, change it to 10 bit, and there we go. So you can see at the top we're shooting 4K 60. By the way, Redfish, thank you for the 15 months. Casey, think of the eight months. Do you think NVIDIA, the NVIDIA event tomorrow is gonna to be good? I think they're gonna announce their 40 series GPUs, which will be exciting, as long as people can actually buy them. All right, let's swap the lens back out. Just again, I'm gonna have this set here. K take a look at where you can see. So you can see kind of to the edge of this window, you can see to the edge of the Senpai logo. If I throw this lens on here, How much more of a field of view do we get? Look how much more, why did it punch in there? Look how much more we get. Of something that, that's this close, it's literally like eight inches away, that's nutty. Especially if we turn this off. Sheesh. Lower the ISO a bit though. Cool. So steady shot. I gotta I gotta adjust all these too. I've never really gone through and like Customize those. Here, let's make this full screen now.
external output off there we go all right what do you think of the vlog look nvidia and evga got a divorce i know that was nuts didn't see that coming evga has been one of the, like the most popular popular gpu manufacturers for nvidia Change shutter speed to 120? That's true. That's true. I mean, if I were shooting something in 120. Oh, I need to do it for the settings on here. Good call. I forgot that. Good call. I would have found that, but it would have taken me a little bit. It would have annoyed me for a minute. Fixed. Who said that? Daniel. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, for those of you who don't, don't know what that was about, you always want your shutter speed to be half of the frame rate. So essentially, um, for half of the frame, that's how long you want the shutter open. That gets the most natural amount of, of motion blur. So if you shoot in 30 frames per second, you want your shutter speed to be 1 60th of a second. So it's half of the frame. If you shoot in 1 uh, 60 frames per second, you want it to be 1 20. This camera doesn't do 120, I have to set it to 125, but it's close enough that there's no difference there. What mode am I in? Let's go back to one. That wasn't one, that was two. There we go. This is directly out of the camera, no color correction, nothing. You just need to work out more. This will be easy because it's getting heavy already. Let's swip, let's swatch the lens. Swatch? Switch the lens. This is a combination of the words swap and switch. Swap the lens one more time. That ultra wide lens is so cool. Like it's a good lens. It's a good looking lens, but it just doesn't get as wide. This is the best I'm gonna get. Is this even with, yeah, this is with steady shot on. This is the widest I'm possibly gonna get. And just for handheld stuff, I'd like it to go a little bit wider. I feel like I'd have so many more options for some cinematic stuff, you know? I like the 12 mil look better. And I was really hoping this lens would be exactly what I needed. And it's great. Like if this lens just went up to 15, just one more, just one more, you get a 15 to 35 like Canon has, which of course it's just as beefy as this one. So that, you know, that Canon one in particular wouldn't actually solve anything, but a 15 to 35, which is actually, that's the one up here. <laughs> Forgot. It's the one we're unboxing with. Uh, it might, it might work out, but I think we need to keep the 12 on there. Think phones will take over the next, take over big cameras in the next five years? No. I think um, I think they'll be used more widely and you'll start to see them as a real tool for semi-professional work, but physics is physics. At the end of the day, you can't replace this with a tiny thing on your phone. You can't, you can't replace that massive, the massive sensor, like the full frame sensor. You just get more of a dynamic range. As phones get better, so will cameras. So there will always be a massive gap between the two, but I think they'll be used as a more prominent tool. This, uh, someone asked what the aperture is. The aperture of this one, the 12 to 24 is f2.8. The aperture of this guy, the uh, the 16 to 35 is f4. So we lose that aperture, we lose a little bit of low light use, and we lose the background blur, and we lose the insane width of this. This is this is the width of the other lens. This is the width of this lens. 
I got I to gotta look up and make sure. So again, this is 16 mil. This is what the other one does. This is what this lens does. <laughs> That's the difference. It's bonkers, man. It's bonkers. <sighs> Sensor size matters so much. That's actually one of the real reasons that I don't, let me turn this up a little bit. That's that's one of the legit reasons that I don't do um, that I don't do Fujifilm. They're they're all crop sensor. None of them are full frame. I mean, I'm sure they have a full frame, but like their crop sensors are just as expensive as the full frame ones. And I've just become so accustomed to the full frame look, I can't justify going down to a crop sensor. Camera Tim keeps getting on me about it. He wants me to try it, but like he wants me to spend 2,600 bucks and buy a lens. For a crop sensor camera, I'm sorry, I can't do it. I can't do it. Is it worth getting uh, something like an on-sale GoPro for a streaming cam and then a webcam? Then a webcam? Yeah, you'll need, um, which, are there any GoPros that can plug straight in with USB and just use be used like a, like a good 1080p60 webcam? I don't remember if the new ones do that. But if you were to get one used, like an old one, it probably wouldn't, and you'd need to get... I mean, I've done videos on it. They look great. They look way better than most webcams, but you do need a capture card with it. You'll need to get, you know, a, a cam link, or there are there are some cheaper ones. No, Avermedia. I haven't tried any of theirs. I've never gotten a hold of any of their little cam link clones. I hate calling it a cam link clone, because it's just a capture card, but still, you know what I mean. The cam link clones by Avermedia that are way cheaper, like half the price of Elgato's. I'd love to try those out and see. New ones, just make sure you take out the battery. I think with the old ones, I also took out the battery. I don't think I ever put a battery in there. I use the Avermedia Live Gamer Duo and it's wonderful. I've always had problems with the Live Gamer Duo. I did a video on it and I gave it a good review, but said like, hey, I'm having this weird issue though, but I think it's just, a, you know, Avermedia is gonna fix it for me. And that we tried it in multiple PCs, had the same problem, I resent it back. They sent me another Live Gamer Duo, tried that in multiple PCs and it kept, the image kept cutting out, the signal kept cutting out. So they were 0 for 2. Both of them had the exact same issue in multiple PCs. So, yeah, I, I gave up on the Live Gamer Duo. <laughs> In theory, I loved it, but couldn't get one to work and too many of them messed up that I couldn't really trust it. Maybe they fixed it by now, I don't know. Have you used much cinematic mode? I don't think I've ever used cinematic mode on my iPhone. I don't think I've used it once. How are you liking the FX3 so far? We've had it for a while and we used it as our main camera for a while too. And it's a great camera. The FX3 is a fantastic, what did I just do? I hit a button on my mouse and it changed that. Uh, no, we used the FX3 for a while. It's a great camera. I'm gonna start using it as my vlog camera. I think I'm going to, I think what's gonna happen. And so I've got three fantastic cameras, right? The profile on the right makes you look good. Um, so yeah, that is, that's the A7S, the A7S Mark IV. And I like the color, I've got some color correction on it, which is why it looks a little bit better. This one is directly raw going straight out of the camera with no color correction. So this is why it's a little bit duller. Um, but we've got three main cameras and lately I've really been only using one. We've got the A1, which shoots an 8K. That's what we shoot our main, like that's on a tripod. It sits there, it doesn't move. It's the main A-roll camera. I've had the A7S III, which is the, which is generally like, I don't vlog a lot, but it's like my mobile, I go out and I shoot with it. It's got the flip out screen, which the A1 doesn't have. Shooting 4K, so I can't shoot an 8K like the A1. Um, but if ever I needed to just do something handheld, I would always grab the a7S III. And the FX3 has kind of been sitting there not being used. And I haven't found a good use for it unless like we go somewhere and I bring Scott with me and he shoots with like the handle on it, right? It's great for like a second cameraman. 
but there have only been like in the last two years there have been like twice where we've done that and other than that this fantastic camera just sits around so I kind of realized it felt like it was it might actually be a better vlogging camera than the a7s3 and I'm gonna throw the a7s3 I just ordered a couple more tripods which by the way I order like $40 tripods like I don't spend a lot of me in fact I like the $40 tripods more than my I've got a fancy one out there I've got a, a Manfrotto one that you know, it's got the big beefy legs and the and the, the head that whatever the liquid, whatever. And it's so much more of a hassle to adjust than those little forty dollar ones. So I just I just bought two more of those forty dollar ones. I'm gonna throw this on there permanently. And when I'm doing stuff that's not like main A roll, I'm gonna use this one as my handheld, and I'm just gonna keep this one on a tripod and have it be my tripod camera. And I'm kind of pumped about it, if I'm being real. I think I'll be able to get a lot more life out of every single camera if I do it that way. I'm gonna watch some, uh, I'm gonna watch some tips and tricks on typical camera setup stuff and like how people like to set up their buttons, see if I can get some good ideas. But all in all, I'm feeling pretty good about this, especially as I'm starting the, uh, I'm starting the Harris Heller channel like videos on this channel, I can't, I've been saying this for forever, but uh, 2023, I'm putting a ton of effort into it. I'm still just busy out of my mind. I have no time to do this stuff, but 2023, I'm gonna be giving it a lot more effort and, uh, and, and sacrificing some of the other stuff I'm working on to work on the things that I feel like have a lot more potential. And I'm gonna be doing a lot more vloggy stuff. It's not gonna be, I don't want it to be just like typical like, let me take you around through my day. Like I really want to give it, I want to give it a look that like I haven't really seen given yet. I really want to push myself and develop some new skills and do some things that I've always wanted to know how to do. So I'm going to view it as a, as a big learning opportunity. How's your health kit going? Just going great. I've uh, been working out twice a day with very few exceptions and it's, I feel good. I've, I've noticed a pretty big difference in how I look, but it's I'm nowhere near where I want it to be. I was hoping to improve a lot faster. Five years ago, my body improved so much faster than it does today. I really let myself go at the worst time possible. But I think if I take it, I like I want it to look really, really good for TwitchCon, but I'm gonna be in LA for like a week and a half straight starting on Friday. And then I'll be home for like three days and I might go to TwitchCon. Depends on if we, we have a potential sponsor for TwitchCon. We'll see if that goes through. If the sponsor goes through, I'll go to TwitchCon. If not, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm not going to TwitchCon. So depending on that, I'm not gonna have the body that I wanted for TwitchCon, but that's okay. I should have started earlier. Sony a6000 brand new or used a5100 for over half, but in like new conditions. It depends on the difference in the features and it depends on what you're using it for. For a stream camera, a5100 used, 100%. If you're recording, I know that a5100 has a, a problem with overheating. So I'd be a little bit wary of that. There we go. Do you guys notice that when I moved it, it would like slowly keep moving afterwards? Watch this. Check this out. If I move it, look, it's still moving. I'm not moving it anymore. I'll move it. The camera's like, look at the skateboard on the edge of the screen. Watch this, ready? I'm not moving it. It's still moving. Let me move it again. You see how it's like slowly moving again? That's the steady shot trying to, yeah, it's the IBIS. It's the steady shot. It's, it's not only IBIS, but it's also uh, just software stabilization. That's trying to keep it, it's like slow down all the movements and compensate. Uh, by the way, I'm behind on some stuff. I'm really behind on stuff. Casey, thank you for the eight months. Dillberry, thank you for the four months. I have a touristy camera question. This was 15 minutes ago. I'm really sorry. I have a touristy camera question. Heading to Mexico from U the UK in six weeks with like a small vlogging cam that isn't big and obvious for city use. Uh, 
it, I don't know how small you're looking to go. Um, the A7S III is fantastic. Sorry, sorry, not the A7S III. The Sony ZV-E10 is great. It's much more compact. I've got one. In fact, I made you wait 15 minutes for that answer. Let me grab that camera. Give me one minute. So this guy, just so you can see the difference between them. Now let me switch back to a, the regular camera angle. I'll move this off to the side. So you got an A7S III, you have a ZV-E10, and this is with the lens extended. I don't have a battery in there. I think I may have pulled the battery out while the lens was extended. Normally it, it shrinks back in and it only goes out to here. This is the Sony EV10. Is this more like what you're talking about? If you're looking for something smaller than this, I would say, honestly, use your phone. If your phone is a little old, upgrading your phone is gonna be one of the best things you can do to get an amazing camera. Go for the ZV1 instead? No. ZV-E10 is a considerable upgrade from the ZV-1. The main thing being the replaceable lens. If you're not looking to do any vlogging, you don't need anything super wide, the ZV-1 will be fine. It's got a built-in 24 to 70, I wanna say. I know it starts at 24, um, which is on a crop sensor way too narrow for vlogging. It just, a, it was a bad decision. Um, but if you're just looking for like straight, straight on pictures, the ZV-1 will be fine. But without that, without a replaceable lens, you really struggle to, you really struggle to, to have a lot of flexibility. It's so limited in what it can do. Such a bummer. Yeah, your phone, if you're looking for something smaller than a ZV-E10, uh, your phone is an amazing option. Uh, Quentin Mo Moriarty, Moriarty, Moriarty. Thank you for the nine months. Welcome back. Jay Howes Radio. Camera lens recommendations for podcasters under 1K. Um, camera lens combinations for podcasters under 1K. Jeez, I haven't looked at, there have been, this has almost been kind of a frustration. I feel like camera makers have stopped. Like this is the last like, real budget option that Sony's released in a while. And it's not even really a budget option. It's still seven, $800. They used to have stuff like the Sony a5100 for 450 bucks. And they just don't exist anymore. Um, and I think it's because phones are putting them out of business. You can't, you can't, really justify getting a $450 camera when the cameras on your phone look as good as they do. So I think that's why you're not seeing them as much. You, there used to be a ton around the $500 range. They just don't exist anymore. Um, but, but I would still say for podcasting, if you're looking for something, J house, um, I would recommend getting something used. That is, that's where you're gonna get the most bang for your buck, especially for podcasters where the camera is motionless. Again, let me grab one more camera for you. One sec, I'll be right back.
I love buying used cameras. It's too fun. Sony's, Sony's cameras from forever ago are like, they really hold up like better than they probably should. This one's kind of dirty. Hold on. I bought this one and I actually still haven't used it. <laughs> it bothers me. I bought it for a specific reason. I just haven't set up that reason yet. I really wanted to get into doing guitar stuff on stream. And I was like, oh, I'm going to have, I've got two capture, uh, what are they called? Two Camlink Pros, so I can put plug eight cameras in. This thing turned off, yeah. I can plug eight cameras in, and I still have only been plugging in four and hardly even using more than one or two. I've got four empty slots in my PC, and this is gonna be one of them. This is the original A7S. So like, this is the most common vlogging camera for like real, like professional YouTubers. They all get the A7S III because it's a fantastic camera. This is the original A7S, the A7S I. This is the, the, the grandpa of this thing. It's crazy how much thinner it was. Like they used to make them way thinner than they do now. I think they realize that people don't care about it being this thin. They want something a little bit chunkier. It feels better in your hands. You have better battery life, a little bit more power. Um, but this thing has a full frame sensor. Look at that thing. Full frame sensor. Shoots in 4K, can't record 4K internally like they can now, but it can do, if you're podcasting, it can do 4K out of HDMI, which is actually why I've got another one up there. I've got two of these. I bought them for 500 bucks each on, on Facebook Marketplace. Second one's mounted up there. I've been using it as like the main wide room angle. And I mean, if you throw, the colors don't look as good as they do nowadays, but like you throw a little LUT on it, throw some color correction in OBS, like this thing, you can get full frame 4K that looks amazing for 500 bucks. These things are 11 years old and they hold up so well. Yeah, full frame 4K for 500 bucks. You can't do autofocus, you can't do continued autofocus with them. Remember that? So there, there are flaws for sure. No autofocus, so you better expect it to be a manual focus, which honestly for podcasting, I think is what you want anyway. You're not moving around a lot while you're podcasting. Move the camera kind of far away so you get enough of a focus room that you're not gonna really move out of it. And You've got an amazing podcast camera for a solid deal. The problem is, again, another problem is it is a full frame camera, so lenses are going to cost a little bit. Um, that'll bring you right up to that thousand dollar range, even if, like, the, the lens I have on here is the Samyang 400 mil, which I got brand new. I want to say it was 500 bucks. If you get a prime lens, if you get a prime lens, one that doesn't zoom, as long as you know exactly what focal length you want and you get the right lens, you get an amazing image quality. You'll get a great low f-stop, great for low light, great for background blur. You get it at a cheap price. So, it's pretty nuts. Someone asked me, uh, oh, Ryan Travis says FX3 or A7 IV. Uh, depends on what you're shooting. Um, keep in mind the a7 IV, the main thing that kills me, the, really the only thing that kills me, the a7 IV would be my ideal camera. I love that you shoot like 35 megapixel photos versus this one only shoots meg 12 megapixels, but anything over 4k 30, you get a massive crop. 4k 60 is like a 1.5 X crop and that kills it for me. So if you don't need to do 4k 60 at all for any reason, like if you're looking to stream or, or just regular vlog or whatever, yeah, sure. The A7 IV, it's awesome. It's a hundred thousand dollars cheaper. But if you're looking to do anything a little bit beyond that, that's what the FX3 is for. Uh, I know you use a custom G502, but have you seen the new G502X wireless? Really clean? I have seen it. I actually really want to check it out. Um, I want to hit up uh, Colorware. They also just announced the new AirPods custom colored. Um, Kenzie and I are, are doing a lot of business investing right now. 
And so I can't justify buying stuff that I don't need. <laughs> Um, I should say more stuff that I don't need than, than I already buy. Cause I upgraded my phone, I upgraded the watch. Um, I kept, by the way, can I give you a, like a little pro, a life pro tip here? Um, if you have an old watch, like I was going to trade in my old watch for credit for the new watch and I would have gotten $80 worth of credit. And I was like, that's stupid. So what I did is instead I bought the most comfortable watch band I could. Just write them all off. Oh, of course. I mean, all tech, all of my tech is a business write-off. Uh, and maybe not the watch, but anyway. Uh, but I bought the most comfy watch band I possibly could. And now I wear my old one at night, the Series 5, because it cannot still update to, do, to watch OS 9. So I updated it. I got a super comfy band. It is now my night watch. And so it tracks my sleep while this one's charging. While I'm wearing, just whichever one I'm wearing, the other one's charging all the time. So when I'm wearing this one, my sleepy one is, is charging and then I swap them out at night and I track my sleep. I track my sleep and it also, the best way, oh my gosh, I've been doing this for two days now. The best way you can possibly wake up in the morning is a little vibration on your wrist. I will never go back to a full on alarm ever again. Like being jolted awake by a loud noise just a little bit of a buzz on your wrist is the greatest way to wake up. Highly recommend it. So if you have an old watch and you're thinking of upgrading to a new one, keep the old watch, get a super comfy band for it and let that be your alarm. And it will change your life. Every single morning, Every single morning of mine has changed from a, an abrupt, loud, shocking sound to a nice little vibrating wrist. And it's, I've, I've gotten up like an hour earlier than I used to every day. So I wish a ring could do it. I bet they're, yeah, putting a vibrating thing, it'd be a massive, it'd be a massive ring. I think you're probably a Sony guy, but have you ever tried the R5C? Funny you should say that. Um, I think I'm actually testing one. It might actually be, I think it's getting in the mail today. <laughs> uh, I'm shooting a video with one soon. I'm really excited about it. I've never, I haven't used a, a Canon since the EOS R, which I now use as, as my uh, top down unboxing camera, but I, sh I ordered the original R5, but then the A7S III was announced and I canceled my pre-order and switched over to Sony and I don't regret it at all. But I do want to try out the R5C. The one reason I would, wait, hold on. Who's he responding to? At Matt. The one reason I would is because the Sony orange ring. Wait, I'm looking for Matt. What did Matt say? Oh, I'll never understand why people spend thousands on mirrorless and DSLR cameras when they can spend less on a great camcorder that can run for hours without overheating. Oh, because they're not the same thing. None of my cameras are overheating. This camera has been going for, I can stream with this for hours and it'll never overheat. Um, but also camcorders, I've never seen a camcorder with like a replaceable lens system. Like you get a legitimately better image quality. You get a fatter sensor. I mean, maybe there are full frame camcorders, but like the remove the replaceable, replaceable lens system. Oh my gosh. It's not the same thing. Maybe if the camcorder gives you exactly the look that you want, sure. Go for it. But like, it's not the same thing. The Sony orange ring. That's what you buy these for is this little orange ring in there. I didn't like it at first. I thought it looked cheap, but it's grown on me. I wish I could trust myself to wake up and get a mild vibration to a mild vibration on my wrist. Why don't you try it? Try it. It's, it's surprising how effective it is at waking you up. Try it, but then also set an alarm on your phone for like 10 minutes later, just in case. See if it works. Try it for a couple days straight. See how uh, reliable it is. 
but it's hard to sleep through a little bit of a like just tapping. It's like this because you know it's it's got like the like the haptic feedback like the. It's not like a like an old phone. It's like a little. It's like someone just doing this to your wrist. It's like, it's really nice. Charging my old Series 5 to try this right now. Uh, update it to Watch OS 9 also, so you get all the, like, I've been tracking my sleep. I don't really know what it means yet, because I've never tracked my sleep before, but Watch OS 9 and the health app adds in, like, legit sleep tracking stuff. So you can see the top is when I'm awake. This is light sleep. This is, no, no, this is REM. This is light sleep. This is deep sleep. And you can see that now. You don't have to like pay for another app or anything. My girlfriend falls asleep on my arm, so at 6 a.m. her skull is gonna start vibrating. <laughs> Ever sleep on your other arm? Apple's gathering all your sleep data. What are they gonna do with that? <laughs> Dillberry. Thank you for the super chat. Super Practical Gaming, welcome to the Thrifty Boys. Thank you guys. I've been wanting to do, um, I've been wanting to jump in and do some streams just to bring more people over here. Do a stream on the Alpha Gaming channel. Sem <laughs> I still do that. Senpai Gaming channel. Oh good, oh man. I almost forgot, I have a Japanese lesson but we pushed it back to, I think 30 minutes from now? Um, and then, and then I also want to do one on, on Twitch. Like when I remember when I used to grow my Twitch channel by streaming on YouTube on the Senpai Gaming channel and then bringing people over to Twitch, I just, I should have been doing the opposite this entire time. And I'm just like, I'm just trying to figure out like, what's the right time and place to do that? You know, Japanese lesson. Yeah, I take, I do three Japanese lessons a week. And I've hit, a, I've hit a wall, like I've hit a ceiling. I need to actually spend some time in the country if I want to get any better. Is there any way to convert HDMI to SDI cheaply? Not that I know of. I've never used SDI. There might be, but I have literally no idea. Buy lenses from Japan. The yen to US dollar is so good right now. Mm, interesting. Can't lie, Sony's actually doing really well in the smartphone market, not in sales. But it could be a serious competitor. Dude, have you guys seen the new phone and what they can do? The, what is it, the Sony Xperia? You can plug it from, uh, from USB, from your Sony camera into your Sony, ca your Sony phone and using their app, you can stream to Twitch and YouTube. That's all you need. All you need is this and a phone. I'm tempted to buy one just to stream from this thing. That would be bonkers. If I were to stream, by the way, if I were to stream, I would for sure go with this cheaper, this light, not cheaper, lighter lens. Cause then you're holding the camera up the whole time. Lapel mics versus shotgun mics. Oh, I use a shotgun mic, but I'm also in a, in a very controlled environment all the time. I love the sound of a shotgun mic. It's so much more natural. Lapel mics, they get, uh, I don't want to say they're muddy, but they're just, they're not as bright. The thing, the, the, the phone's like another $800, $900. I can't really justify that at the moment. What I was saying is Kenzie and I are doing a, a lot more investing in stuff right now. I just made a pretty massive investment in a tech company. Um, I'm really excited about it. You guys will know more about it soon. Live stream on the FX3? I want to. Like if I end up going to TwitchCon, and bring this thing and vlog with this, just going straight onto the phone and just have the phone like mounted underneath it. How sick would that be? Bought one share of Tesla? No. No, a small, it's a startup. I invested in a startup. I wouldn't, maybe it's not really a startup, but anyway, smaller tech company that I think has a ton of potential. And I'm really excited about it. I'm very involved. And we've got some big plans. I'll talk more about it later. You'll know. You'll know when I'm when I'm ready for you to know.
Should I hold off on content creation until a camera or should I go ahead and take the dive? 100% go and take the, vibe, take the dive. You need to learn how to edit. You need to learn your process of creating. You should use your phone and edit in iMovie or whatever you have. You should 100%, 100% get started. Nobody's gonna watch your first 50 videos anyway. So it doesn't matter. That's, that's nobody watched my first 100 videos. It doesn't matter. It's not about making it look amazing. It's about learning, learning the craft and figuring yourself out and exploring. You can ask Sony for a review unit of the phone. Let me just hit up my Sony guy. <laughs> I don't have one of those. <laughs> I would like one, maybe one day. Anyway, guys, I got to run. I got a Japanese lesson in 36 minutes. I need to prep for that. I haven't done any studying. I was supposed to study like four, five chapters, I think five chapters of, of vocab. And I, so I got to run. Uh, plus I'm not using stream beats. What happened? I haven't been using stream beats. I forgot to turn the playlist on, uh, on repeat, which by the way, it's important for you to know that is like so many times people are like, Hey, I was using stream beats and I got a claim on my video. And I have to be like, okay, well, why don't you go in? Why don't you go in and take a look? Make sure it was a stream beat song because there's a possibility you either finished the playlist and it moved on to another playlist or you're using a fake stream beats playlist and someone snuck their own songs into there. It's 99% of the time. It's one of those two. Anyway, guys, thanks a ton. Uh, I won't be streaming Wednesday because I've got a video going up tomorrow and Wednesday. It's a big week, got two massive launches this week. Really hope you guys enjoy them. So I'll be going live Thursday instead and then Friday I'm leaving for, uh, Friday I'm leaving for LA for, for Vid Summit. Thanks for hanging out though. I will see you guys on Thursday. See you guys on YouTube tomorrow and on Wednesday. Have a good one guys. Peace.